as the waters covered the sea. Let your glory be seen in me. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Well, I am on the first episode of the next hundred having completed episode 100. And I pray that you'll be here when I preach episode 1000. Because the Lord is good. Praise be to God. So, uh, welcome to uh, a blessed and a great half hour or so in the presence of Christ Jesus. I know that through his word that you will draw closer when you uh, decree the word of Christ then you come into contact immediately it takes no time I'm going to be here with you when you say ah and Jesus answers because uh, you have been speaking his word and the word of righteousness will then keep you and speak to you and instruct you I, I, I'm talking some supernatural things which will become true in your life. This is true. I am no different from you. I just keep at it because I'm led of the Holy Spirit to go this way for my sake and for yours as well and for the world. How is that? I speak to you truth today by the Holy Ghost. I speak to you truth today by the Holy Ghost. And last time I uh, spoke at the end of the episode about the legal right that has been given to the believer to bind something and to loose something. Now binding and loosing is actually a legal action. If any two or three come together and decide, well, what am I going to retain and what am I going to give away? What am I going to turn loose and what am I going to keep? This is a legal and binding action instituted by Christ Jesus. And the roots of it is in the Old Testament uh, with the confirmation of two and three witnesses. So we in the New Covenant, we come together, one, two, three, we bind and we loose by the power of the living God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Staying legal. So we have the legal authority to bind. That is righteousness in Christ Jesus to bind in his name. Now, I did say to you that... We are able to do this in order that the rage of the age, I heard the, my poetry is coming to life again, I don't know why that is, but um, the rage of the age must not overtake you. It must not enter your house. It must not wreck your relationships. It must not keep you up at night. There's a spirit of the world at work, viciously at work. And the enemy is trying to put stress on your situations to break it. I want you to back away from the edge, like back away from the argument. Uh, change the conversation. Do something nice. Don't give in to the impulse to fight. Because it's not you fighting, trust me. I've done this, I don't know, 20 years and uh, I can discern now exactly when uh, the enemy has entered the situation. I'm like, no! Not today, not here, not now. But I tell you what, I know about the perfect love of God. How is that? And I'm going to decree that that is prevailing today in this dwelling, in this house, in this situation. And that's it. Now, not today. So we have legal binding authority in the name of him who has these great 
powers and I will not stop speaking about his great unilateral powers. Unilateral power is a power that ha has uh, the ability to work on its own. He, he doesn't need the Congress or the House of Lords or whatever. No, no, no. no. It has unilateral authority in heaven and in earth. Now isn't that something? That is your Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I love it. Absolutely. When I think about it, I sleep peaceably at night. I say, Master, you take care of this. And so, that was Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 to 20. It's a conflict breaker. It's a resolution securing prayer. You will have a conclusion. Go to sleep. Bind the rage. Bind the contention. Bind the confusion. The anger. It's burning up your calories. Burning up your, your pancreas. Uh, send it away. Send it away. Bind it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let the spirit of peace be loose in your house. The grace of God to come down like a shower of rain. His holiness to pervade you like a garment and wrap you in light. Talk, talk, talk your way through this by the spirit of the living God. And I will be agreeing with you. Amen. And so welcome again and I'm going to just quickly decree these things over you once more in Jesus name and uh, now why I'm saying to you uh, in this covering prayer actually that I prayed the last time I go pretty quickly so uh, I, I like to what do you say consolidate I like to make sure that you uh, get it before I leave it there's no point in my you know, getting you up, making you stay up, you know, do, no, 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 I have to make sure that you get it, it's righteousness, how is that? So, I am going to press in, because uh, your idea of righteousness, according to where you live, according to the house you grew up in, according to what you saw your parents do and didn't do, you have formulated an opinion of righteousness. Jesus said, my righteousness comes from the Father because I do exactly what I see him doing. And I say what I hear him saying. That is where his righteousness comes from. It comes from the Father. Jesus Christ talked about uh, himself, but he talked about himself in relationship to the Father. And I'm going to say to you again today that if you miss Jesus Christ, and if you ignore what he's saying and trying to get to the Father by some other means, you won't do it. You'll get something else, but you won't get the righteousness of God which comes through Christ Jesus, which is superior to all other forms of whatever that is. So, Jesus Christ said to those of his time, Look, I am sent to you with a word from the Father. It's important for you to know that I did not send myself, and if I did not send myself these words, are not mine. So don't miss Christ Jesus. Don't miss him this time around either. I'm praying for you now. Let me decree this word into your spirit. When I say do not be trying to do good works on your own. You know, some like to see their names on plaques and everywhere, you know, and street names and all that that may not be for you I don't think it's for me but what I do know is for me is that I, I I'm taking the load off of myself to come in the presence of God I have taken the load off myself I'm teaching you to take the load off of yourself put the load on Christ Jesus and remain clear remain free Remain covered. Take, so tell somebody, please. The apostle said, take the load off of yourself. Put it on the shoulders of Christ Jesus. 
who bore your sins on a cross. Amen. And so then, today I'm going to decree this, that you will keep the law of the Lord in your heart. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, when you pray, go into your closet. Well, you may not have your closet with you on an aircraft or in a mall, but you certainly have a secret place in your spirit. And you don't need a whole lot of room for that. You just need to turn your face away from somebody and just begin to talk to the master. He's not deaf. And so then, do not draw attention to yourself like the old Pharisees and don't pray out the whole Bible at one time. Nobody will get it. And do not forget to bless the poor. Uh, as a matter of fact, why don't you decree today that I will bless the poor? I go ahead and I will bless the poor. And uh, I will settle arguments with others quickly by the word of God. And uh, I won't litigate. I'm going to take my brother to court. I'm going to mediate and leave my offering at the altar. And I'm going to go make peace with my brother. It's all in Matthew 18, conflict-breaking prayer. And I won't look the other way. I will confront sin. I will confront immorality. I will do it. I will not back my eyes and turn away my face from wrongdoing and then ask God to hear my prayers. I will not do it, neither will you. And... I further declare to you today that you will keep your vows to God. I'm not telling you like the old covenant, don't, 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 don't. I'm saying do. Keep your vows to God. Jesus said, or don't make the vow at all. Lean not onto your own understanding. This is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, I believe. Lean not onto your own understanding. Don't do it. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Don't take revenge into your own hands. I want you to pray about every situation. Say, I will seek the face of the Lord and then <laughs> let your prayers honor God. At the end of a fast, a prayer day, will you decree today that, yes, I believe I have honored God. My prayers have honored God. I have worshipped. And I have not judged my brothers or sisters. I have not, Matthew 7, I have not tried to take the beam out of their own eye when I have a log in mind. That's Matthew chapter 7. I like that. No self-righteousness here. Don't practice it. And I decree that you will not practice self-righteousness. But you will lean on to God's righteousness and take the load off yourself. And don't make requests to God for yourself alone. Don't, don't, don't do that. Jesus said even the wicked people do that. They love their children too. And do not fast to achieve personal gain. I offer to you Isaiah 58 and do not do not possess the spirit of the world inside of you for Jesus Christ the quickening spirit the loving spirit has come to overturn that and by these decrees today decreeing declaring the righteousness of God over you I'm praying that righteousness will indeed spring up in you as I continue to seed it into you in the name of Jesus Christ having the authority to do so to impart it by the Spirit of Christ Jesus that's an impartation folks blessed be the name of the Lord so here's something now then let me continue by the Spirit of God and then uh, expect some change 
Now expect some change after a, 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 an anointed person comes and imparts righteousness by speaking the word of God. That was the book of Matthew and I repeat from last time that I prayed into your spirit. But I didn't say don't, don't, don't. I said do, do, do. And so now expect a change. Expect a change in your hearing. Yes, in your hearing, in remembering others. Others' needs will come up before you. You'll be talking to God more. Expect this. And this is the action of the quickening spirit. Don't be shocked by feeling a profound sadness for the world or wishing that you could do something more about it. Yes, you can. Make plans to follow through on those God-given impulses that you're feeling. Many are prospering right now in a pandemic because God has told them to do something to help somebody else and they're prospering. That's the Holy Spirit working on the inside of you. That's the Holy Spirit making intercession for you. That's why you're feeling and hearing these rumblings in the Spirit. Thank God for that uh, beautiful word, rumblings in the Spirit. And so, praise God. Now I believe, I believe that a, a new series is coming, but uh, let me just finish this one by the grace of God. The Apostle Paul identified something. He said that, uh, now, as we continue to pursue then and to possess and overtake and overcome, the Apostle Paul said there's a quickening spirit inside of you that's making some changes, overturning some things. There is in us, uh, uh, th th no, there's, there's something that I recognize in some believers, double standards. But they're not even sure that they're there. And there can be no doubt that there are double standards at work in believers in the church. But, now, wait a minute. Let's clear the decks for the Spirit of God that gives life to you, the Spirit of Righteousness in Christ Jesus, is going to overturn and wipe out the double-mindedness and you will declare, my yes is yes and my no is no. Now we want to take back. We want to take back the life that we were destined to live multitudes of possessions in the past 50 years, you know. Let, let me ask you something. Do you have any idea how many houses are vacant across the world now because everybody in them has died? Do you remember how many fantastic cars are parked and with no drivers and keys to houses and all of that? Let me ask you something. Did the possessions count for anything? You'll find that some are, cars are 40 kilometers. They're not even driven. Some houses not even changed. You know, you, you change the carpet. Watch this, please, I beg you. Take a hold of truth. Take a hold of righteousness. Go for the higher ground. Now, take back the life. So tell somebody, take back the life, the God-given, God-breathed life that you were supposed to live, not from the outside through your senses, but from the inside through that which is called the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Multitudes of possessions do not necessarily bring you happiness. You know it. I once saw a woman on TV that they took into therapy, took her to court, took her into therapy because she couldn't stop shopping. The spirit of the world had overtaken her. She, and people kept giving her credit cards. It was marvelous, but it made me very sad. And there was a man in the Bible, you remember him, Zacchaeus, who in Luke chapter 19 and 1 to 9, and uh, 
when he met Jesus and he had a Christophany, he met Jesus, uh, you know, uh, encounter with righteousness. He encountered righteousness. Uh, this Zacchaeus, let me tell you about him again a little bit more. I like that. And so, the first thing Zacchaeus did was started to assess his situation. He said he was very rich. And the first thing he started to do was start to bless the poor. I'm telling you about those impulses. <laughs> well, it could be very well a sign that uh, those people who have many, many, many possessions, they may be having, they have a, 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 a deep uh, a chasm, uh, something that cannot be filled. And uh, they shop all day. The tags are still on the clothes when they die. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, wait a minute. Do not lean on to your own understanding. The Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost will uh, separate you from that which is excess. This is not a life of excess. This is a life of necessity. And so, let us delight ourselves in the Lord first and foremost as we decree. And so, uh, let us move then from emptiness then to fullness in Christ. And onward into true prosperity. Let us hear this word today gladly. I'm taking a quick look back here. And uh, Jesus Christ wants to hear today that you cannot reject him. Tell him, Master, I am here for the long haul. I hear your words. I know your words. And I'm going to keep them because in them is life. And so, oh, praise God. I am more concerned about what you will receive than what you have been achieving all the time. I want you to receive newness of life into you. I want you to receive the Christ life. It's another level, another domain. The name of Jesus Christ. He's, he's begging you to keep his words. He said this, you know, that if you keep my words in you, these words of spirit and life, the day will come when the words of Christ will speak back to you and out of your belly shall arise springs of living water. And in the next two minutes, let me tell you, time flies. Oh, Jesus is not about managing poverty. You hear me? Jesus is not about managing poverty, struggling. No, no, wait a minute. But about living abundantly. He is not about how well you manage sickness, but that you be made whole. He's not about how well you can battle the enemy day after day and day after night. <laughs> no. But in how you exercise authority in his name as you believe. And so, see, the old covenant of us used to uh, in the old covenant draw fear into your hearts. Some cultures still pro they still move like this. They put emphasis on don't do this, don't, 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 don't. Jesus Christ is saying, do it, do it, do it, do it. Seek after righteousness and you shall be filled. Then that thirst shall be filled. And he's talking about theirs that mourn shall be comforted. He said, do it. And so I continue to declare truth to you. The message and the power of Christ is springing up inside of you as I preach. I confess by impartation that this river of living water is springing up in you as it springs up in me. I've been writing for days on end, not because of this episode. And so you're literally making contact with Jesus Christ throughout his words. And uh, you're declaring word after word. Words of spirit and life. So let us examine these texts. Let me announce to you 
from this vast reservoir of power in Christ Jesus. That at the end of Matthew, before he sent us out, he said, all authority, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now that is overriding unilateral power. I don't have to ask angels, prophets, nobody. Jesus Christ is saying, look, I am it. And here is something that you want to know. You want your government to act right. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 7 says, look here, this one that is born unto us. Here is what he's called. He's called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of, somebody say, unilateral power in heaven and in earth. And say, when I speak, I'm going to speak and I'm going to decree that in his unilateral power, I'm proceeding. The Bible says in verse 7 of uh, Isaiah chapter 6, of the greatness of his government, there shall be no end. There shall be no end to his peace. And he will reign over his kingdom. And he will uphold it with justice. I tell you, justice and righteousness is about to break through. You say, Jesus is coming? Yes! Uh, don't worry about that. Worry about justice. Righteousness is coming. Hallelujah. With swiftness as of white horse. In the name of Jesus Christ, the zeal of the Lord is accomplishing it even now. Amen. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I said hallelujah. Well, this is Apostle. Take the load off your shoulders. Give it in to Christ, uh, who is when I tell you that there is not one area of your life that righteousness cannot bring correction, cannot lift you up, overturn the guilty verdict, smash the burden. It's, it's, you talking somebody done you wrong? No, wait a minute. Not if the not if the robes of righteousness are fitting right. And not if you are decreeing the words of Christ daily. We're going to continue this work. Now, I believe that uh, uh, don't, don't, don't concern yourself with what number uh, episode it is. We do that so that if you miss any, that you will refer to them by number. You can go back and say, well, I didn't see number four. That is for your convenience. Uh, the word continues as we pursue and overtake. We're possessing Christ. I tell you something, I, uh, uh, when I got a hold of his unilateral power, Somebody gave you a check and say, write whatever you want to write on it. Uh, we're going to be talking about some awesome things uh, which will become uh, 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 important. They become uh, uh, just uh, the reason for your life. You'll wake up calling not Mama and not John, but Jesus. Uh, how is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I knew that I was on my way somewhere when I wake up. You know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now then, I pray for you that your soul today is restored in righteousness. And that I just said, Psalm 23, verse 3. I decree then today that your soul, wherever you are, is restored in righteousness as this master leads you through the valley. And I will be back next time. And just as a footnote, I just heard the Lord say, don't worry about the pandemic. Just right now, the Spirit of the Lord said, focus on systemic righteousness. Don't worry about systemic racism. I'm going to preach now. Wait a minute. Systemic righteousness to overthrow systemic unrighteousness. The Lord bless you. And we decree a thing, and it shall be established. I'll see you next time, that is for sure. Amen.
You can reach Apostle Dr. Eureka Stewart via email at thebreakthrough at BethesdaMiracle.com, on her website at BethanyCovenantAlive.net. Use the contact us on Facebook at Apostle.dr.e.stewart. Voice Over the Nation's TV ministry is on every Sunday at 5 p.m. on YouTube and on Facebook. Thereafter, it's on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website. You can also find it on YouTube. Search under Voice Over the Nations. Donate if you are in agreement with what the Apostle is doing. Help the Apostle to help you. Sow into her ministry and become a partner. Use the donate link on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website. Prayer requests are available on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website. Put the Apostle to work for you. Share your prayer requests. She will pray for you and into your situations. Service. See the Apostle live in action, preaching the now word of God every Sabbath. That's Saturday from noon till 3 p.m. at 89 Thornmount Drive, Unit 11, Scarborough, Ontario, Canada, near the corner of Morningside and Shepherd. If you are in agreement with helping the Apostle to take her ministry to the nations, become a partner. Use the donate link on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website. Podcasts and intimate chat with Apostle Dr. Eureka Stewart are available via BethanyCovenantAlive.net or you can search Eureka Stewart on Apple, Google, Spotify, Breaker, or Anchor. The Apostle releases a kingdom quote every day in English and Spanish. They are available on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website or on Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is D-R-E-U-R-I-C-A. Instagram is dr.e.stewart. If you are in agreement with helping the Apostle bring a World Healing Day event, become a partner. Use the donate link on the BethanyCovenantAlive.net website.